What's up guys? Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at the different wall panels that Sheffield Metals offers and talk about um, how they support them, the different features and functions of each, and what types of projects that we often see them installed on. Today I've got Jeff Hawk from Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So we've got a handful of wall panels that Sheffield offers. The Borden Batten panel, a couple different flush wall options, and a wave panel. We're gonna talk about all three of those. So let's start with the newest one, which is the board and batten. Tell me a little bit, just a general overview of what that is. The board and bat panel became really popular. Usually you see it done out of wood. So, you know, then they, you know, we came up with a way to make it out of metal. New Tech offers it out of their SSQ2 roll former. So, you know, it can be produced on site. You can do it in different gauges. You can do it in different widths. Uh, right now, Sheffield just completed ASTM E330 testing on it. Uh, so we do have it tested in 24 gauge, just over a 12 inch wide panel. And, you know, it's a real popular look. I imagine, you know, it's probably going to be a lot more popular in the residential market. But, you know, you could see it in some commercial applications, whether you're talking about, uh, you know, office buildings, things like that. You know, it's installed using a nail fin. The nail flange, so there's no clips or any extra accessories uh, that you have to do with that. You just, you know, you got to keep an eye on your lengths, you know, anytime you're doing a nail flange style panel. So whether it's a roof or a wall. So, uh, you know, it should go up pretty easy and, and give a look that's going to last a lot longer than wood. Good point. And we've already seen some really cool projects that use um, print coat technology that actually makes a panel look like wood or another type of material. Right, yeah, no, some of the some of the wood patterns they got out there are, are better than looking at the real wood stuff. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to say is Borden Batten has been around for metal for a little while, but in the in-plant market, but having it in a portable roll forming machine is kind of a game changer. Um, you know, it's just one more one more option that, you know, New Tech and the portable roll forming suppliers are able to, uh, you know, offer to their customers, um, you know, to, be able to compete with the fixed in place manufacturers. If you've already made an investment in SSQ2, you know, it's not that much of a stretch as far as an add on goes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's really the first truly residential siding profile that, you know, a new tech offers. Right. And it, quite honestly, it's always cool to have something new. It sits flat against the wall. So I like that. We tested over a solid plywood deck, you know, for typical residential applications. You know, it performed pretty well in the tests. Um, you know, and it should perform pretty well when it's installed out on site. Absolutely. And I'm looking at the cut sheet right here. The, the numbers for the panel are uh, 10 inch minimum width, 25 and a quarter inch uh, maximum width. It's got a three quarter of an inch seam height um, and it can be run in 24 and 26 grade 50 steel and 032 aluminum. You know, just to reiterate, we tested in 24 gauge, you know, just because you can run a panel that wide doesn't mean you always want to. You know, you start getting in 25 inch wide panels, you got a pretty good chance of being susceptible to oil canning, things like yeah. that. So <clears throat> things to take in consideration when you're looking at you know, what you actually want to put, uh, you know, up on a project. Uh, we tested out of a, a 16 inch wide standard coil. So, you know, there's no drops that you would have to take. Even on the cut sheet, it does say over 12 inches, you might need to add some striations to avoid oil canning. All right, so the board and batten, super exciting to see that new profile on the market. Uh, this one has been around for a while, the flush wall panel. Can you talk to me about that? Flush wall panel is a, a really cool look because it gives you a really flat, smooth surface where you see the back side of the seams. Uh, Sheffield has two options when it comes to uh, the flush wall panel. We have a one inch flush wall panel and we have an inch and a half flush wall panel. The funny thing about it is that once it's up, you're not going to be able to tell either one of them apart, right? So whether it's an inch off the wall or an inch and a half off the wall, they look exactly the same once they're up, once they're installed. We have engineering on the one inch version. So if you're out there and you're looking and you're thinking about, you know, picking a flush wall panel up for your machine, I'd personally say go with the one inch because, you know, you're, it's going to look the same whether it's an inch or inch and a half once it's installed. And this way we have something we can offer you engineering wise if it should, you know, come up and if you need it. Uh, other than that, you know, it installs through a, um, a metal flange as well. It doesn't use a clip. One of the things we had to do to get it to pass testing was uh, we had to stitch through the seams together due to the design of the panel. If, if there's not a integrated fastening pattern up along that seam where they uh, touch together, we didn't feel like it would pass testing. So we, uh, we used a stitch screw to install them. Uh, we're looking at installing it 
maybe try doing it with a glue type system, make it a little bit easier on the installers. Again, that was tested at a 12 inch wide panel. Uh, comes out of a standard 16 inch wide coil to, to uh, make it easy as far as ordering. And it's a neat look, you know, it's, it's, it's a good option depending on what it is that you want to, what, what is you're trying to accomplish aesthetic wise. So does it matter if it's horizontal or vertical? So we do everything vertical. Uh, I have seen it installed horizontally. I don't know how concerned you need to be with the water shedding portion of it. I'm not a wall expert. I, I would imagine you'd want to probably lay it out to where uh, the hem of the panel is facing down. So, you know, that way, if any water was to get in between the seams, uh, it's not sitting in that channel of the hem. But usually everything we do, we install vertically with it. And the other interesting part about a flush wall panel is that it can be installed with a reveal. Correct. You can have almost a reverse board and back panel type look uh, where you have basically gaps between it. What we don't have testing on that currently, because, uh, again, you know, we talked about uh, how those panels interlock. There's no way to stitch screw that together, but that might be able to be something that we can accomplish if, uh, if the testing with the uh, glue uh, or adhesive applied goes well. That's also a really versatile panel profile because you can use it as an underdecking profile or soffit. Tell me a little bit about that. Correct. So uh, you can have underdecking using it basically as a liner panel for open frame systems where you're going to see, uh, instead of seeing the backside of your panels, you can use that and see the flush panel look. Or uh, you can use it as soffit. Uh, you can use it as a solid soffit or a vented soffit. New Tech sells the perforators that go with the machines. They have the calculations for the airflow as far as uh, CFMs go. You might need one strip of perforations. You might need two. Um, it really all depends on what your building requirements are. But, you know, again, one more thing a contractor can provide to basically, you know, complete the whole roofing portion of it, right? Yep. You can do the roof, the soffit, you throw a gutter machine in there, you got pretty much everything that you could think of. We mostly see those panels produced at 12 inches wide. And one thing that I've heard about the soffit panel is, especially on residential, fabricators will put a V-rib down the middle of the soffit panel and make it look a little bit smaller for that residential market. So when we're looking at installations of flush wall panels, you know, what do we typically see? You know, it's, it's usually commercial or I'll say industrial commercial, but, you know, you could see it on uh, condominiums, apartment complexes, things like that. It could be residential, you know, it depends again on the look that you're going for. I think, I think one of the main things to consider when you're using that panel is where it's being applied and the type of traffic and conditions it's going to be used in because the part of the panel that is going to be exposed isn't supported against anything, right? You know, when you have a standing seam panel or like the board and back panel we talked about, the, the flat wide area is supported against the decking, you know, whatever you're putting it up against. On the flush wall panel, that isn't being supported by anything usually, not unless you put some kind of insert or filler, you know, it's something like that. So I think you need to think about, you know, possible damage that could happen. You know, it's on an apartment complex, people leaning up against it, running the trash cans into it, things like that. Um, you know, sometimes we'll see in those types of situations where the first floor of the building is done with a brick or stucco type siding. And then, you know, for the rest of it up is uh, is a flush wall panel to help kind of protect it from, you know, any abuse that it might see traffic wise. Again, we've seen it, too, on a couple uh, projects where, you know, they do uh, panels of different sizes. And that looks pretty cool where you have the different, you know, narrow panels and wider panels. Uh, things like that. So you can get creative with uh, the overall look of what it ends up being. All right. The last wall panel that we're going to be talking about today is the wave wall panel. This one's kind of a unique one. Tell me about this, Jeff. Starting off, the wave panel is its own machine. So it's a dedicated machine to run the wave panel. We offer it with two types of installations. We call it the wave uh, 16.4F and the 16.4C. The, uh, the F stands for flange and the C stands for clip. So we have two types of installations with it, one using the uh, the notch flange system and one using a, a clip system based on basically depending on the lengths of the panel that you're trying to run, right? If you're doing an industrial building, you got a real long panel run, you can use a clip system and that'll allow for expansion and contraction to take place and you won't have to worry about the laps, things like that. It's 16 inches wide that we tested, uh, it's 24 gauge. To me, it's definitely more of an industrial type wall panel system. You're, I don't think you're going to see it on any type of residential applications or, or probably even like office buildings, things like that. 
one of the cool things about it is that based on the ribs, you shouldn't have to worry about oil canning. Well, you shouldn't have to worry about the high traffic stuff like we were talking with the flush wall panel. It should hold up really well over time based on the design and the pattern of the panel. And, you know, we have seen it on some different types of facades. I've even seen it on, you know, the outside of a coffee shop where they'll have a brick section, a wood section, and then a small metal section. So it can be used creative, creatively in an architectural way as well. Yeah, I, I can see it. I can see it more like accents, mm-hmm. you know, maybe let's say like the whole building envelope done, done in it, you know, but like you're talking about where you have the different material wise sidings that could, that could definitely look cool. There's a reason they made it into a portable roll former, obviously, right. It's popular. Um, you know, and again, being a portable roll former, it should be easy to, when you're doing large projects, which probably what you're going to see with this and, uh, you know, being able to roll through some on site. So those are Sheffield's wall panel profiles we offer right now. Jeff, you know, what should someone remember about how Sheffield supports these profiles for our customers? With the inclusion of the new board and bat panel, uh, we kind of rounded out the different type of offerings that we can now, you know, give with the, when it comes to wall panel systems. You know, we have residential looking panels. We have more industrial looking panels. We have commercial profiles. A lot of time and thought went into making sure that we get the appropriate testing done for the uh, the commercial system so we can meet the specs. Even even the board about residential one, you know, just keeping the end user in mind if they if they care about a tested system, being able to provide that. You know, the flush wall panel, you're able to get a weather type warranty on. Trying to not just, you know, put panels out there, but support them, have some thought that goes into them, you know, especially when it comes to coil sizes, things like that, to keep, you know, to not make things cost prohibitive or, you know, to, incurred costs that aren't necessary, you know, just trying to keep, keep what the contractor's interests are and, you know, be able to provide them with different options to uh, depend on the customers, the market that they work in. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Definitely learned a lot about Sheffield's wall panel profile offerings. If you want to learn more about Sheffield's wall panels, comment down below. We'd love to answer some questions for you. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.